wonder, alien. We headed back the way we came in the direction of the giant screen. That's when we walked straight into a group of kids we didn't know. They just come out of the woods doing stuff I'm sure they didn't want their teachers to know. I could smell the smoke now, the smell of firecrackers. They pointed a flashlight at us. There were six of them, four boys and two girls. What school are you from? One of the boys called out. Beat your prep, Jack started to answer, when all of a sudden one of the girls started screaming. Oh my goodness, she shrieked, holding her hands over her eyes. I figured maybe a huge bug had flown into her face. No way, one of the boys cried out, and he started flicking his hand in the air like he just touched something hot, and then he covered his mouth. No way, no way. All of them started laughing and half covering their eyes, pushing each other. What is that? said the kid who was pointing the flashlight at us. And it was only then that I realized the flashlight was pointed at my face and what they were talking about, screaming, was me. Let's get out of here, Jack said to me quietly, and he pulled me by my sweatshirt sleeve and started walking away. Wait, 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 yelled the guy with the flashlight, cutting us off. He pointed the flashlight right in my face, and now he was only five feet away. Oh, man, oh, man, he said, shaking his head, his mouth wide open. What happened to your face? Stop it, Eddie, said one of the girls. I didn't know we were watching Lord of the Rings tonight, he said. Look, guys, it's Gollum. And this made his friends hysterical. Again, we tried to walk away from them. And again, the kid named Eddie cuts us off. He was at least a head taller than Jack. So the guy looked huge to me. No, man, it's an alien, said one of the other kids. No, 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 it's an orc, laughed Eddie, pointing the flashlight at my face. This time, he was right in front of us. Leave him alone, okay, said Jack, pushing the hand holding the flashlight away. Make me, answered Eddie, pointing the flashlight in Jack's face. What's your problem, said Jack? Your friend's my problem. Let's just go, I said, pulling Jack by the arm. Oh, man, it talks, screamed Eddie, shining the flashlight in my face. Then one of the other guys threw a firecracker at our feet. Jack tried to push Eddie, but Eddie shoved his hands into Jack's shoulders and pushed him hard, which made Jack fall backwards. Eddie, screamed one of the girls. Look, I said, stepping in front of Jack and holding my hands up in the air. We're a lot smaller than you guys. And at this point, where I knew I should run away as fast as I could, but Jack was still on the ground, and I wasn't about to leave him. Yo, dude, said a new voice behind us. What's up? Eddie spun around and pointed his flashlight toward the, toward the voice. For a second, I couldn't believe who it was. Leave them alone, dude, said Amos, with Miles and Henry right behind him. Says who, said one of the guys with Eddie. Just leave them alone, dude, Amos repeated calmly. Are you a freak too, said Eddie. They're all a bunch of freaks, said one of his friends. Amos didn't answer them, but looked at us. Come on, Mr. Tushman's waiting for us. I knew that was a lie, but I helped Jack up, and we started walking over to Amos. Then out of the blue, the guy, Eddie, grabbed my hood as I passed him, yanking it hard, and I was pulled backwards and fell flat on my back. It was a hard fall, and I hurt my elbow pretty bad. I couldn't see what happened afterwards, except that Amos rammed into the Eddie guy like a monster truck, and they both fell down. Everything got really crazy. Someone pulled me up by my sleeve, yelled, run, and someone else screamed, get him. And for a few seconds, I actually had two people pulling the sleeves of my sweatshirt in opposite directions. Until my sweatshirt ripped and the guy yanked me by my arm and started pulling me behind him as we ran, which I did as fast as I could. I could hear footsteps behind us chasing us and voices shouting and girls screaming. But it was dark. I didn't know whose voices they were, only that it felt like we were underwater. We were running like crazy and it was pitch black. And whenever I started to slow down, the guy pulling me by my arm would yell, don't stop. Voices in the dark. Finally, after what seemed like forever of running, someone yelled, I think we've lost them. Amos? I'm right here, said Amos's voice a few feet behind us. We can stop, Miles yelled from further up. Jack? I yelled. Whoa, said Jack, I'm here. I can't see a thing. Are you sure we lost them, Henry said, letting go of my arm? That's when I realized he'd been the one who pulled me as we ran. Yeah? Shh, let's listen. We all got super quiet, listening for footsteps in the dark. All we could hear were the crickets and the frogs and our own crazy panting. We were out of breath, stomachs hurting, bodies bent over our knees. We lost them, said Henry. That was intense. What happened to the flashlight? I dropped it. How did you guys know, said Jack? We saw them before. They looked really mean. You ran right into him, I said to Amos. I know, right? Laughed Amos. He didn't even see it coming. We all started laughing. 
I grabbed Augie and I was like, run, said Henry. I didn't even know it was you pulling me, I answered. That was wild, said Amos, shaking his head. Totally wild. Your lip is bleeding, dude. We listened for a second to make sure no one had heard him. Where are we, said Amos. I can't see the screen. I think we're in the cornfields, answered Henry. Yeah, we're in the cornfields, says Miles pushing, Miles pushing a corn stalk at Henry. Okay, I know exactly where we are, said Amos. We have to go back in this direction. That'll take us to the other side of the fields. Yo, dude, said Jack, hand high in the air. That was cool of you to come back for us. Thanks. No problem, answered Amos, high-fiving Jack. And Miles and Henry high-fived him too. Yeah, dudes, thanks, I said, holding my palm up like Jack had, though I wasn't sure if they'd high-five me too. Amos looked at me and nodded. It was cool how you stood your ground, little dude, he said, high-fiving me. Yeah, Augie, said Miles, high-fiving me. You were like, we're littler than you guys. I didn't know what else to say, I laughed. Very cool, said Henry, and he high-fived me too. Sorry I ripped your sweatshirt. I looked down and my sweatshirt was completely torn down the middle. One sleeve was ripped off and the other was stretched out. It was hanging down to my knees. Hey, your elbow's bleeding, said Jack. Yeah, I shrugged. It was starting to hurt a lot. You okay, said Jack, seeing my face. I nodded. Suddenly I felt like crying and I was really trying hard not to. Wait, your hearing aids are gone, said Jack. What? I yelled, touching my ears. The hearing aid band was definitely gone. That's why I felt like I was underwater. Oh no, I said, and that's when I couldn't hold it in anymore. <clears throat> Everything that had happened kind of hit me and I couldn't help it. I started to cry, like big crying, what mom would call the waterworks. I was so embarrassed. I hid my face in my arm, but it couldn't stop the tears from coming. The guys were really nice to me though. They patted me on the back. You're okay, dude. It's okay, they said. You're one brave little dude, you know that, said Amos, putting his arm around my shoulders. And when I kept on crying, he put both his arms around me like my dad would have done and let me cry. The Emperor's Guard. We backtracked through the woods for a good 10 minutes to see if we could find my hearing aids, but it was way too dark to see anything. We literally had to hold on to each other's shirts and walk in single file so we wouldn't trip over one another. It was like black ink had been poured all around. This is hopeless, said Henry. They could be anywhere. Maybe we can come back with a flashlight, answered Amos. <clears throat> No, it's okay, I said. Let's just go back. Thanks, though. We walked back towards the cornfields, then cut through them until the back of the giant screen came into view. Since it was facing away from us, we didn't get any light from the screen at all until we walked around to the edge of the woods again. That's when we started seeing a little light. There was no sign of anyone anywhere. Where do you think they went, said Jack. Back to the food trucks, said Amos. They're probably thinking we're going to report them. Are we, asked Henry. They looked at me. I shook my head. Okay, said Amos, but little dude, don't walk around here alone again. If you need to go somewhere, tell us, and we'll go with you. Okay, I nodded. As we got closer to the screen, I could hear high on a hill was a lonely goather, and I could smell the cotton candy from one of the concession stands near the food trucks. <clears throat> there were lots of kids milling around in this area, so I pulled what was left of my hoodie over my head and kept my face down. Hands in my pockets. As we made our way through the crowd, it had been a long time since I'd been without my hearing aids and it felt like I was miles under the earth. It felt like that song Miranda used to sing to me, ground control to Major Tom. Your circuit's dead, there's something wrong. I did notice as I walked that Amos had stayed right next to me and Jack was close to the other side and Miles was in front of us and Henry was in the back of us. They were surrounding me as we walked through the crowd of kids like I had my own emperor's guard. Sleep. Then they came out of the narrow valley, and one, at once she saw the reason. There stood Peter and Edmund and the rest of Aslan's army, fighting against the crowd of horrible creatures whom she'd seen last night. Now in the daylight, they looked even stranger and more evil and deformed. I stopped there. I'd been reading for over an hour, and sleep still hadn't come. It was almost 2 a.m. Everyone was asleep. I had my flashlight on under the sleeping bag, and maybe the light was why I couldn't sleep, but I was too afraid to turn it off. I was afraid of how dark it was outside the sleeping bag. When we got back to our section in front of the movie screen, no one had even noticed we'd been gone. Mr. Tushman and Ms. Rubin and Summer and all the rest of the kids were just watching the movie. They had no clue how something bad had almost happened to me and Jack. It's so weird how that can be, how you can just have a night that's the worst in your life, but to everyone else, it's just an ordinary night. Like on my calendar at home, I would mark this as being one of the most horrific days of my life. This and the day that Daisy passed. But for the rest of the world, this was just an ordinary day. Or maybe it was even a good day. Maybe somebody won the lottery today. Amos, Miles, and Henry brought me and Jack over to where we'd been sitting before with Summer and Maya and Reed. 
And then they went and sat where they had been sitting before with Himena and Savannah and their group. In a way, everything was as exactly as we had left it before we went looking for the bathrooms. The sky was the same. The movie was the same. Everyone's faces were the same. Mine was the same. I, but something was different. Something had changed. I could see Amos and Miles and Henry telling their group what had happened. I knew they were talking about it because they kept looking over at me while they were talking. Even though the movie was playing, people were whispering about it in the dark. News like that spreads fast. It was what everyone was talking about on the bus ride back to the cabins. All the girls, even girls I didn't know, were asking me if I was okay. The boys were talking about getting revenge on the group of mean boys, trying to figure out what school they were from. I wasn't planning on telling the teachers about any of what had happened, but they found out anyway. Maybe it was from the torn sweatshirt and the bloody elbow, or maybe it's just that teachers hear everything. When we got back to camp, Mr. Tushman took me to the first aid office, and while I was getting my elbow cleaned and bandaged up by the camp nurse, Mr. Tushman and the camp director were in the next room talking with Amos and Jack and Henry and Miles, trying to get a description of the troublemakers. <clears throat> When he asked me about it then a little later, I couldn't remember their faces, which wasn't true. It's their faces I keep seeing every time I close my eyes to sleep. The look of total horror on the girl's face when she first saw me. Aftermath. Mom was waiting for me in front of the school along with all the other parents when the bus arrived. Mr. Tushman told me on the bus ride home that they had called my parents to tell them there had been a situation the night before, but that everyone was fine. He said the camp director and several of the counselors went looking for the hearing aid in the morning while we were swimming in the lake, but they couldn't find it anywhere. Broarwood would reimburse us the cost of the hearing aids, he said. They felt bad about what happens. I wonder if Eddie had taken my hearing aids with him as a souvenir, something to remember the orc. Mom gave me a tight hug when I got off the bus, but she didn't slam me with questions like I thought she might. Her hug felt good, and I didn't shake it off like some of the other kids were doing with their parents' hugs. The bus driver started unloading our duffel bags, and I went to find mine while Mom talked to Mr. Tushman and Miss Rubin, who had walked over to her. As I rolled my bag toward her, a lot of kids who don't usually say anything were nodding hello or patting my back as I walked by them. Ready? Mom said when she saw me. She took my duffel bag, and I didn't even try to hold it. I was fine with her carrying it. If she had wanted to carry me on her shoulders, I would have been fine with that too, to be truthful. As we started to walk away, Mr. Tushman gave me a quick, tight hug, but didn't say anything. Home. Mom and I didn't talk much the whole walk home, and when we got off the front stoop, I automatically looked in the front bay window, because I forgot for a second that Daisy wasn't going to be there like always, perched on the sofa with her front paws on the windowsill, waiting for us to come home. It made me kind of sad when we walked inside. As soon as we did, Mom dropped my duffel bag and wrapped her arms around me. and kissed me on my head and my face like she was breathing me in. It's okay, Mom. I'm fine, I said, smiling. She nodded and took my face in her hands. Her eyes were shiny. I know you are, she said. I missed you so much, Augie. I missed you too. I could tell she wanted to say a lot of things, but she was stopping herself. Are you hungry, she asked. Starving. Can I have grilled cheese? Of course, she answered, and immediately started to make the sandwich while I took off my jacket and sat down. Where's Via, I asked. She's coming home with Dad today. Boy, did she miss you, Augie, Mom said. Yeah? She would have liked the nature reserve. You know what movie they played? The Sound of Music. You'll have to tell her that. So do you want to hear about the bad part or the good part first? I asked after a few minutes, leaning my head on my hand. Whatever you want to talk about, she answered. Well, except for last night, I had an awesome time, I said. I mean, it was just awesome. That's why I'm so bummed. I feel like they ruined the whole trip for me. No, sweetie, don't let them do that to you. You were there for more than 48 hours, and that awful part lasted one hour. Don't let them take that away from you, okay? I nodded. I know. Did Mr. Trishman tell you about the hearing aids? Yes, he called us this morning. Was Dad mad because they're so expensive? Oh, my gosh, of course not, Augie. He wanted to know that you were all right. That's all that matters to us. The guys were pretty big, Mom, I smiled. Seventh graders, I think. She shook her head. Seventh graders? Ugh. Mr. Tushman didn't tell us that. Did he tell you how Jack stood up for me, I said? And Amos was like, bam, he ran, rammed right into the leader. They both crashed. It was pretty awesome. Amos's lip was bleeding. 
He told us there was a fight, but she said, looking at me with her eyebrows raised, I'm just, I'm just so grateful you and Amos and Jack are fine. When I think about what could have happened, she trailed off flipping the grilled cheese. My Montauk hoodie got totally shredded. Well, that can be replaced, she's answered. She lifted the grilled cheese onto a plate and put the plate in front of me on the counter. Milk or white grape juice? Chocolate milk, please? I started devouring the sandwich. Oh, can you do that special way you make it with the froth? How did you and Jack end up in the edge of the woods in the first place, she said, pouring the milk into a tall glass. Jack had to go to the bathroom, I answered, my mouth full. As I was talking, she spooned in the chocolate powder and started rolling a small whisk between her palms. But there was a huge line and we didn't want to wait. And then what happened, she said, putting the glass in front of me. I took a long drink of chocolate milk. Is it okay if we don't talk about it anymore right now? Oh, okay. I promise I'll tell you all about it later when Dad and Via come home. I'll tell you every detail. I just don't want to have the whole to tell the whole story over and over, you know? Absolutely. I finished my sandwich in two more bites and gulped down the chocolate milk. Wow, you practically inhaled that sandwich. Do you want another one? I shook my head and wiped my mouth with the back of my hand. Mom, am I always going to have to worry about mean kids like that? I asked. Like, when I grow up, is it always going to be like this? She didn't answer right away, but took my plate and glass and put them in the sink and rinsed them with water. There are always going to be mean people in the world, Augie, she said, looking at me. But I really believe, and Daddy really believes, there are more good people on this earth than bad. And the good people watch out for each other and take care of each other, just like Jack was there for you and Amos and those other kids. Oh yeah, Miles and Henry, I answered. They were awesome too. It's weird because Miles and Henry haven't been really been very nice to me during the year. Sometimes people surprise us, she said, rubbing the top of my head. I guess. Want another glass of chocolate milk? No, I'm good, I said. Thanks, Mom. Actually, I'm kind of tired. I didn't sleep too good last night. You should take a nap. Thanks for leaving me, Babu, by the way. You got my note? She smiled. I slept with him both nights. She was about to say something else when her cell phone rang, and she answered. She started beaming as she listened. Oh my goodness, really? What kind, she said excitedly. Yep, he's right here. He was about to take a nap. Want to say hi? Oh, okay, see you in two minutes. She clicked it off. That was Daddy, she said. He and Vera are just down the block. He's not at work, I said. He left early because he couldn't wait to see you, she said. So don't take a nap quite yet. Five seconds later, Dad and Via came through the door. I ran into Dad's arms and he picked me up and spun me around and kissed me. He didn't let go for a full minute until I said, Dad, it's okay. And then it was Via's turn and she kissed me all over like she used to when I was little. It wasn't until she stopped that I noticed the big white cardboard box they had brought in with them. What is that? I said. Open it, said Dad, smiling. And he and Mom looked at each other like they knew a secret. Come on, Augie, said Via. I opened the box. Inside was the cutest little puppy I've ever seen in my life. It was black and furry with a pointed little snout and bright black eyes and small ears that flopped down.